welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about how surviving is not the same thing as living. The truth is, many of us just get by in our days, repeating the same mundane tasks, routines, and experiences over and over. For most, they rarely break the cycle with exciting experiences that break their routine and make life exciting. When we are truly living life, we are excited, full of energy, immersed in the present moment, and feel joy in our experiences. So how do we break the cycle of merely surviving instead of living life fully? Making small changes in your routine to make time to do tasks that bring you joy is essential to thriving day to day. Perhaps for you that's spending time in nature, having a great workout or cooking a great meal. For each person, what they find fulfilling may differ. Another great way to live rather than just survive is to find hobbies that you're passionate about and that give your life purpose and meaning. Whether it's helping others by being part of a nonprofit organization or joining an environmental group that wants to save the planet, feeling like you're part of a community and having a sense of purpose gives our lives fulfillment and joy. As Maya Angelou quotes, the best part of life is not just surviving, but thriving with passion, compassion, humor, style, generosity, and kindness. Stay tuned, coming up after the break, you had so many epic milestones in your career. You were even on The Apprentice with Donald Trump. So what's been your most memorable milestone to date? Sandra Bullock and Betty White singing Get Low in the movie <laughs> The Proposal. That's when I knew, because, you know, it's nothing for artists to get their song in a movie or on the soundtrack, but the song was in the script. Wow. So Sandra Bullock and Betty White had to learn the lyrics to the song. <laughs> it wasn't just, you know, they, they just put it in the background. They had to know the lyrics, you know? <laughs> so when I saw that, I was just like, wow, I've made it. Wardrobe provided by H&M. Next up on the show, we have multi-platinum Grammy award-winning artist, Little John. Little John, thank you so much for being on the show today. This is honestly such a pleasure to have you because I've been listening to your music since elementary school. So seeing you, like I've been excited uh, all make, day and I'm so thrilled you're on my show. You're making me feel old, oh, man. No, elementary no, not school. at all. You're iconic. Where were you, where were you doing listening to me in elementary school, young lady? <laughs> you know what? I didn't know what the words were. We were just all jamming to your music. We never knew what the lyrics were. <laughs> So, but I mean, everybody Sorry. knows you, everybody knows you. And, and that brings me to, you know, everyone knows you as this iconic hip hop artist um, and this legendary artist. So I want to bring it back to the beginning and where you started your humble beginnings. Um, I know that you taught yourself to DJ at 18 years old. So let's talk about that. Why did you want to pursue music? Well, uh, yeah, I was born in Southwest Atlanta, Georgia and I used to have a lot of house parties and then uh, my homeboy that was the DJ for the house parties, one day it just really struck me and like how he was making people go crazy by playing music. So I was like, I want to learn how to DJ. And he started to teach me how to DJ. And then he went away to the Navy and while he was gone a year later, I'm like the hottest DJ in Atlanta when he comes back. And that's how I started, you know, getting into the music industry and by DJing that's how I met Jermaine Dupri mm -hmm. who gave me my first job at uh um, you know my first real job was at So So Def working as AR and Street Promotions. I put together all of the So So Def Base All Stars albums for him over there. So that's how I kind of got into the industry on the other side. And then while I was at So So Def around 1996 I um ended up recording a song with these guys called the east side boys yes. and we kind of met through one of the artists that was on one of the so so Dev bass all star songs oh, wow. so that's how we met and then that's how i became an artist and we did a song called who you with and it became a super smash in atlanta and that started my career off as an artist Mm -hmm. That's amazing. And, you know, I feel like when people are meant for greatness, they always have some sort of intuition that they feel that, you know, they're meant for something big. Are you surprised at your success looking back? Because, 
you know, you've had massive success. So have you ever been surprised or has it been surreal for you that it's been such a long journey? <laughs> uh i mean yeah because when i'm you know when i was starting and i was just going i was just going i wasn't really you know trying to make a career out of being an artist when we did our first song i just wanted to make a song for the clubs of atlanta you know and that spiraled and went got crazy and then we had to do an album mm -hmm. and then that turned into you know later on uh the first song that i made made two short get interested in me and he ended up signing me to his label. So it's like a bunch of things started to kind of domino effect happen, but I never initially thought that I was going to be where I'm at now, you know, and still going, still making music, um, 2021, still producing, you know, I didn't, you know, when I first started producing, it was okay. I wasn't amazing, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. um, to have songs that are still, you know, getting played on the radio and the clubs. And like I saw Sweetie just posted, uh, my type just went three, three times platinum. So wow. it's like, wow, you know what I mean? Like, so yeah, it's surreal to see the success, but yeah, I didn't, I didn't know, man. I was yeah. just, just having fun. Yeah, and your songs are still so relevant. Like I was driving here to the studio and I could hear your music on and it's just, it's it's classic music, you know? So that brings me to my next question. Um, you know, you've constantly stayed relevant in this industry and most people, they have, you know, their one hit wonders and things like that. So what do you think the key to your success has been um, since you've had this long-term career? Uh, man, just keeping, keeping your ear to the street keeping your finger on the pulse of what's going on um, and staying ahead, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And and not trying to do what everybody else is doing. You have mm -hmm. to kind of carve your own path and just do your own thing and not worry about everybody else all the time. A lot of people, you know, like to take the easy route and just be safe. And I, I'm not really a safe artist. You know, I, I'll go and do over here and work with Pitbull when nobody was really doing that type of stuff. I work with LMFAO, I go over here to the Bay Area and sign E-40 uh, and then, you know, whatever, whatever. You know what I mean? I always just been kind of doing different stuff and never been putting myself in the box. And so it's all of those things, you know? Mm -hmm. And I like that you always adapted and you've worked with different artists and kept evolving. Um, and you definitely have a unique style. Like if your music comes on, everyone knows it's you. So I think that's really important for any artist to know and any brand is to stay authentic to who you are and not be afraid to take chances. You know, you had so many epic milestones in your career. You were even on The Apprentice with Donald Trump. So what's been your most memorable milestone to date? Sandra Bullock and Betty White singing Get Low in the movie, The Proposal. <laughs> That's when I knew, because, you know, it's nothing for artists to get their song in a movie or on the soundtrack, but the song was in the script. Wow. So Sandra Bullock and Betty White had to learn the lyrics to the song. <laughs> it wasn't just, you know, them, they just put it in the background. They had to know the lyrics, you know? <laughs> so when I saw that, I was just like, Wow, I've made it. That and <laughs> Dave Chappelle. Mm -hmm. Chappelle show when he was doing the sketch on me. Those two things, because at the time, Dave Chappelle was the biggest comedian mm -hmm. on the planet. And, you know, with the biggest show on the planet, and here he is doing an impersonation of me. And I'm just like, me? Why me? Like, wow, <laughs> this is, you know, amazing. So those two things really made me say, wow, I've come a long, long way from Southwest Atlanta. And yeah, I've, I've accomplished a lot. Yeah, you definitely have. And you also dropped some exciting news recently. I know you dropped your NFT collection. So for our, those of our viewers that don't know, because, you know, I keep hearing this term NFT. So for our viewers that don't know, what is an NFT? Basically, to put it very simple for any novice, it's digital art, mm -hmm. right? So imagine if you had a Picasso, but it was on your phone. Mm -hmm. That's basically what it is, it's art. So people are creating all of these uh, digital art pieces and they're selling them. Um, and that's basically what an NFT is. But 
NFTs are in the crypto world, so you have to use cryptocurrency uh, to purchase the NFTs. But that's basically what it is, is digital art. And I know people are like, well, why would you spend so much money on like the girl that had the catch me outside thing? I think she sold her thing, right? Why would you spend money on that? Oh, let's go even further. The guy who had the first tweet, he sold an NFT of that first tweet. You, you, you buy it because it's an art piece and it's gonna continue to have value. The value is probably gonna go up. Wherever that guy purchased that tweet for, it's gonna go up because cryptocurrency's value is going up and it's an art piece. You know, it doesn't depreciate, it appreciates. Mm -hmm. So basically it's the future of collecting art. Mm -hmm. And that's what NFTs are. So I came out with 37 NFTs and what I did was when people were hitting me, and I didn't know what NFTs were, they were like, yo, you should do an NFT, you should do an NFT. I'm like, what is an NFT? And they were like, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, well, you know. They were like, you should do it of your slogans, your catchphrases. I'm like, hey, that's a good idea. Yeah. I'm going to do that. So I did some NFTs, one of ones. Oh, and that's the other thing about NFTs. If it's one of one, it's only one of those in the world. That means mm. it's definitely like a Picasso. He only paid it one of the Mona Lisa. It's only one Mona Lisa out there. So it's one. So that's why it has so much value. So I did a couple of one-on-ones of me doing yeah a bunch of different ways. Me doing what a bunch of different ways. Me doing okay a bunch of different ways. I also dug into my vaults of my beats. I pulled out three beats from around 2005. Um, and I did some digital art to that. And what else do we do? I have one that's me holding a pimp cup mm -hmm. where I'm giving you an actual pimp cup of mine as well. So if you buy that NFT, you get the pimp cup, right? And then I have some, I have 15, two sets of 15s of some where it's a bunch, it's just me saying a bunch of my phrases, but I'm not on camera. The other, yeah, what, okay, I'm on camera saying it, right? But the other ones are just audio and there's some digital art to that. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm jumping in the NFT space. The auction is on OpenSea. Right now it should be on the front page if you go on OpenSea. But it's really cool because as an artist, it's uh, another level of me making art. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's digital art um, and it's really cool stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so my understanding is that it's NFTs are non-fungible tokens and that basically you could own uh, exclusive digital content. So you get ownership in it, which is really cool. So what can people expect from your collection? Because there's you said there's catchphrases. What other things can people expect? I know there's four categories. So walk us through those five, four categories so our viewers know. Yeah, so you got unreleased beats, mm -hmm. three unreleased beats. Um, with digital art, you got the yeah, what, okay, that I I did exclusively for the NFT. So I'm doing. I did this. You won't see this anywhere else. Um, then it's like two sets of like I did. Yeah, I did. Turn down for what? I did shots. I did maybe to the window, to the wall. I did a wow. bunch of my catch pages, and those are just audio to set to some visuals. So mm -hmm. that's all of the stuff. Amazing. We're going to link all that information so our viewers can get your NFTs. It's very exciting. And, you know, I always like to end the show on a positive note. And I want to talk about, you know, we have a lot of viewers and entrepreneurs who maybe are afraid to, you know, go after their dreams and goals because my show is all about inspiration and inspiring our audience. So, you know, for our viewers that are maybe afraid to pursue their goals or they're going through a hard time, what advice do you have for them to maybe, you know, follow their dreams and become a success like you did? Well, you just gotta, I mean, nothing in life is easy, man. Nothing is easy. Yeah. So if you really, really, really want to do something, you stick with it and you just don't give up because eventually the sun is going to shine on you it'll come around to you you know what i mean so like i didn't make it overnight you know what i mean it took me a long time to to break through and become commercially successful 
mm-hmm. you know, so it's a grind. But, you know, if you really believe in yourself and you believe in what you're doing, you just stick with it. Just stick with it long enough and it'll 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 happen for you. Mm-hmm. I think that's great advice. And thank you so much for being on the show today, making my day. I have a huge smile on my face because it's just been so exciting to have you on. So congratulations on all your success. And we hope to have you back on the show anytime. <laughs> uh, thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Go- Love Canada. Yeah. <laughs> Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook.